Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this video I want to explain the entire new mod system from kind of a base level. I'm not going to do a specific loadout, but I'm just going to show you kind of some of the extreme examples if you lean into certain things, what your options are going to be like. And then I will work on later in the season working on specific characters, specific mods, weapons, a whole build loadout that's going to be as efficient as possible. Now, loadouts are actually a thing, and all loadout is is whatever weapons and armor that you have equipped to you at a certain point, if you want all of that saved, so you literally have to click one button and you'll have that stuff on your character, you can do that. So if I want this one, that my armor is all specifically general, but I also know I cleared out all my mods, and then I have these specific weapons, all you literally have to do is click it and it'll switch you to it. Now, this can pull weapons and armor that are in the vault and probably pull them from other characters because that character is not active. The thing it can't do is make space on your character or send things off of your character. So it's only going to pull things to your character. So keep in mind that if you are using the loadouts or swapping quite a bit, you might want to keep some of those things nearby. Because if you go through and you're like your mo all your loadouts are very different and a bunch and half your stuff is sitting in your vault. If you click on like six of these mods really quickly, technically you just like stuff your character full of all your gear. And then you would have no empty spaces and probably some of it wouldn't show up. So keep in mind, it will pull stuff to you, but you're probably one, going to want to have space for it. And two, it can't send it away if you want to load, you know, six different things. Just keep that in mind. The loadouts are pretty simple. It's just like whatever you have say on and equipped at a certain point. It also includes subclasses, fragments, aspects, weapons. If you've got certain perks chosen, maybe I like I want stability versus a pendant mag. Well, it's like, do I really or do I know I like this one first and it put those two back? So it's quite literally everything except cosmetics. And again, when it comes to cosmetics, maybe that's something they'll work on later on, but stuff like ghosts and sparrows and ships, all of that stuff, you're gonna have to manage it on your own. Right now, it's just the functional gear stuff. If you're sad about the cosmetics, I get it, but I bet you that wasn't their priority. They wanted the weapon and armor functionality long before they cared about what you look like. Even though Dresny is the end game I hear. So that's loadouts, pretty straightforward. Mods. Mods are, this whole loadout system is great. Now, there are a few things that I know some people feel are lacking. You take the mod like Powerful Friends or Radiant Light that used to be beneficial, especially for the stats that they would give. They no longer give those. But I will tell you, the overall benefits that we got with the changes to this entire mod system, I personally think, and as a Titan, it's probably easier for me to say this, but I think those outweigh what we lost. And hopefully over time, they do a little balancing, tweaking, maybe introduce some more mods that are cool. That stuff hopefully comes later. But for now, we did get a lot of good changes. The first one is your artifact. These are no longer just mods that you have to slot in. If I want overload bow and I want unstoppable scout, what I used to have to do is unlock the mods here. Then I would have to go into my armor and actually choose overload bow and unstoppable scout. And it would take up two of my mod slots. Kind of annoying. If there was like a cool class item like mod that we had and it took like seven energy, well, if I if I slotted that thing in here and then I had stats on there, then my class item would basically be useless for the entire season. Because usually the benefit of that final one was so good, but it would also take away from my class item. Now, that does make me wonder if they're going to make some of these final column mods really good at some point because they all work as passive perks now. So you'll notice Overload Bow, Unstoppable Scout, all of these are just unlocked for good. So then if I have an Overload, if I have an SMG equipped, then I'm good to go. If I have a Bow equipped, I'm good to go. But if I don't have a Bow equipped, but maybe I've got a couple Scouts, I've got Unstoppable covered. Like, you just start moving stuff around. And it's actually really nice that they show what will work against what champions. You know, Overload, I need to jolt them. If it's uh, unstoppable, you need to blind them if you're Arc. And it'll actually tell you, I love this little quality of life thing right here. And if you've got a weapon that works for it, you're good. So the fact that artifact mods are no longer mods, but they're just perks that you can choose and it is free to reset it, that's a good thing. So I love that. Next good change is armor affinity. It doesn't exist anymore. And by that, I mean armor used to have, notice how it says white, like 1791 is the level of the armor. And then the energy is 10, but it's just white. It used to have like solar energy or arc energy or void. Like your armor used to have a type to it, which would mean if it was a solar piece of armor and I had 10 energy, I could still spend the 10 energy, 
but the mods that I had access to were the neutral mods or the solar mods. I didn't see any of the other types and they were not available. Now, if there's something that slots into your helmet, you can literally see them all and pick them all, which is beautiful. So that was a good change. Uh, another one they made was to Artifice Armor. Artifice Armor comes from Master Dungeons, which is, I know, a difficult activity. Uh, but now it's actually, they probably made it more actually worthwhile because every piece of Artifice Armor is going to have a bonus slot. Every normal piece of armor has a stat slot, or you can pick a mod with plus 10 or plus 5, and you get stats. And then three mods that are related to whatever your build's going to be. That's every normal piece of armor. Artifice has a bonus slot. And what it does is it gives you a plus three to a stat, and it's free. So if, for example, like my strength is at 39, but for free, I can bump that up to the next tier because I'm close. Or I could do resilience and get myself up to 81. Like the plus three is nice, but if you picture the fact that if I had artifice armor on every slot, that would be 15 stats or 15 points into whatever stats I want, and it would be free. That's pretty nice, I'll be honest. So Artifice Armor in the long run is going to be worth the grind. And they also said Artifice Armor that drops in Master Dungeons should have higher stat totals that drop. Now granted, you never quite know where the stats are going to fall, but at least the totals should be higher since Lightfall's release. I haven't tested that yet. Obviously, I haven't run a Master Dungeon, but that means if you do put the time into farm Master Armor, hopefully it's worth your while. So that's a good thing as well. So, Artifice Armor, a good thing. No Armor Affinity, a good thing. You've got Artifact Perks that are just now passive benefits and they don't take up your mod slots. Also a good thing. So, we're off to a pretty good start, I would say. Now, a lot of the stuff, if you've been playing for a while or you played previously, some of it's going to look familiar. You still have, on your boots, Scavenger mods. They changed a little bit how most of these mods work with regards to weapons, and they just assigned them damage types instead. And the reason for this is I would mostly say it's probably in combination with match game being removed. Uh, it is normally not going to be something you're seeing in high difficulty activities. So now if it's like match game and you're like, all right, this activity has arc shields and void shields. Well, that means I need to make sure I have an arc weapon and a void weapon. Now, if you see a shield and you don't match the damage type, you're just going to do 50% damage instead of 100%. So it's going to take you a little longer, but it's not going to be like you're doing 5% damage and it's going to take you forever to break it. Now, if you want to go, I want to run a pure solar loadout, cool. Now, if I put solar scavenger on and I've got a solar fusion rifle and I've got a solar rocket launcher, my scavenger mod works for both of those. It's kind of great. If I have something in the kinetic slot, you've also got kinetic scavenger. That's for things like Wither Horde and, you know, Arbalist and Izanagi's Burden and all of those things. So it's all based on a damage type. So you probably have a little give and take where some could be better, some could be worse. But in general, I would say a lot of the times, especially for your heavy weapon and matching it up with your energy weapon, it's going to be nice to have the benefit there. Um, so that's where a lot of these have changed. Same thing, you got like arc reserves or unflinching arc aim. If there's one thing that's that you're looking for a benefit on, you're not going to be looking by like scout rifle, sniper rifle, pulse rifle, hand cannon. It's based on damage type. So keep that in mind. Most things are going to be a little bit different, but now you've got your stasis and your strand options and all of these things are in here. Harmonic, you'll see harmonic in quite a few different places. All of that means is it basically it matches your subclass and it pretty much says it right there. Reduces flinching from incoming fire while aiming a solar weapon. Now the reason it's solar, I have my solar subclass on. If I go to void and I go back to my chest armor, if I do unflinching harmonic, now it's going to say void weapon. That's the difference. So, Harmonic is usually just going to be whatever matches. And then up here, Harmonic Resistance. If I'm running a Void subclass and I want to have Void Damage hurt less, well, it's actually cheaper for that subclass. So, depending on what you want to try and have benefit for, leaning into that subclass can have some benefits there as well. So, they actually really did a pretty good job kind of having you the, giving you the ability to synergize like, you're like, I want to go full on solar. You can do that, and you can be successful, which is quite nice. Now, the new thing that I would say, kind of, or updated previously would be, like, charged with light. That was a thing that we could get. That would be picking up an orb, getting a benefit from it. We also had wells, which were like, hey, you got a kill with 
solar elemental wells. You made those for whatever reason, and you would get benefits from those. They consolidated all that into one system, and it is called Armor Charge. And basically, collecting an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. Any mod that affects armor charge allows you to pick up an orb and get armor charge. So whether it's this one, this like this one, if there's something that triggers the armor charge system, if you have that mod equipped, you now get the benefits of using armor charge. You don't actually have to have like the mod that says if you pick up an orb of power, you are now going to gain armor charge. That is just on by default if you equip a mod that's going to be using that system. So, easiest way I can describe this is here. Melee kickstart. So, for example, collecting an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. Now, this mod specifically says when, I, when your melee energy is fully expended. So, take Strand, you have three. Bonk Hammer, you've got one. But when you fully expend your energy, you gain melee energy. Now, that seems a little ridiculously straightforward, but the idea here is, if I throw my hammer, I don't start at zero for my recharge time. I start a little bit above that. Every time I throw the hammer, I've already got part of the recharge done. And that's just from having the mod equipped. Now, you'll notice it says multiple copies of the mod can be stacked to increase potency of this effect with diminishing returns for each copy of the mod. So if this is, say, a 30% bonus, then maybe this is like a 45% bonus total, and maybe this is like a 50% bonus. So when you really get to that last mod, you're really going to have to know that it's really worth it to do it. Because now if I throw it, I'm probably at like 25, 30% every time I use it. Now, I can pick this thing up because it's my ability as a Titan Hammer. But if I use my shoulder charge, and I'm already like 30% done with the recharge as soon as I use it, that's not bad. That's pretty good. But the benefit lies in allowing this to do more. So multiple copies of the mod increase it. But also, additionally, your armor charge is consumed and you gain additional melee energy for each stack. So instead of getting that much melee energy, if I run out here and go kill all of these enemies, I'm able to get the benefit of more recharge quicker. So if I kill these two... Ah, but there's one crucial piece that I forgot. And that is actually being able to make orbs of power. And typically, you're going to want to do that for yourself. So when you want to make orbs of power, most of that is going to come from the helm slot. Most of it, not all of it. And it's going to say, Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows Create an Orb of Power. Now you'll notice equipping multiple copies of this mod increase the potency of the generation orb. And that what that means typically is that generation of the orb really isn't going to change melee kickstart because one orb still gives you one armor charge. What the orb is going to do is allow you to have more super energy because picking up orbs recharges your super. So if I have solar siphon on, I'm going to get the small mods. But if I put three of them on, I'm going to get the big, big mods. And if I'm getting a bunch of solar weapon kills, I'll be getting my solar super back faster because those big mods will help quite a bit. But for now, we'll just leave it at one. So if I get solar weapon multi kills and I go out here and hopefully there's still some enemies that I can kill. If and you usually want to kill them in pairs if you're really leaning into this. Okay, I gotta have more enemies around here somewhere, right? Come on. There's one. There's another one. And there's another one. Alright, so I'm up to three armor charges now. So you'll notice now with three armor charges, and I've got three of the mods on. If I come over here for one, notice the armor charges, they will sit there. They can sit there until I get logged out for inactivity. So any of the yellow mods require a trigger. Otherwise, the armor charges will sit there until, you know, you run out of time. But they're, I mean, until you not run out of time, until you basically, like, die, most likely. So I've got three melee kickstart mods, and additionally, each armor charge is consumed. You gain additional melee energy for each stack. So I got what well, I was looking at, like 30%. Now if I cast my melee with three armor charges, I'm almost, I'm probably at like 45%, something like that. Just by throwing, but just by using my melee, if I have three armor charges, I'm at 40%. So 
part of it is going to be decide what is worth it to you. Is it like just the 30% going to be a good start with one armor charge? Or if I get a couple armor charges and I use my melee, I'm good. That's where you got to figure out where the diminishing returns comes in. So that is how the, the yellow mods work. Same thing here. Collecting an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. This one, when your shields become broken, you gain temporary damage reduction. Consumes three or more stacks of armor charge, granting a longer duration to the damage reduction for each charge consumed. Three or more. You can actually give yourself the ability to hold more stacks. So if I run around and kill like 20 people with solar weapons and I'm sitting here stacking up armor charges with this, instead of capping out at three, now I can hold a total of six armor charges. So if I did this one, for example, instead of having the benefit of the armor charge resistance for maybe like 10 seconds, if I had six armor charges all stocked up and I had this one here, it might it's going to last longer. So that's going to be a benefit there as well. So, but most all the yellow mods, they are done on a trigger basis. You need to have something happen or do something to cause the effect to go into effect. And then the armor charge in and of itself usually is going to use the armor charges you have. The more charges, the better the benefit. Come down here to legs. There's not really a whole lot. Come down here. You got finishers. Guess what? These are all kind of fun. Using a finisher on combatant spawns an orb of power for your allies. Not you, but for your allies. And it consumes three stacks of armor charge. But guess what? You can have that one equipped. I can have a finisher final blow grant me one temporary armor charge if I don't have any. I've made one for my allies. But you can only do a similar type of mod. So these, you'll notice, for one, I can't equip multiple. And two, I can't stack them all. So all different situations. And this is, again, like class ability to kickstart the same way. So you'll find these mods in different places. But reading them will make... Like this one, finish your final blows, grant you one temporary armor charge when you have none. So if you're at zero and you do a finisher, at least you know you'll get a minimum of one charge. But you're not going to give yourself two from doing this. Now, the other type of mods are going to be blue. And these are going to be based on a timer. So when I gain a bonus two... Uh, strength while I have an armor charge, but it says your armor charge now decays over time. So what's going to happen is if I have one mod equipped and I pick up an orb for 10 seconds, I'm going to have the effect of having say 30 more strength. What that's going to do is let me see if I can make myself at like 40 strength. So it's a little more round number. It would take me from tier four while that 10 seconds is effect. It would take me up to tier seven. So I would get more recharge from it. If I lean into this further, if this is plus 30 to the stat, this is plus 50 to the stat, and then this would be plus 60. Now, granted, I leaned really heavy, heavily into that, but depending on what I do with my mods, I can have that benefit to my stat have more effect. So now it's on a time delay, or it's a time countdown. So if I pick up three orbs of power, I have 30 seconds. Well, now I've got 40 seconds if I can find four orbs. Or I've got 50 seconds. Or I've got 60 seconds. So now if I can find six orbs in pretty close succession by killing a bunch of adds, now for 60 seconds for those six charges, I've got 100 strength in theory. Then if I want to go even farther with this thing, if I put this on, for example, picking up an orb of power grants you an additional stack of armor charge. Now I only need to find three orbs because each one counts for two stacks three orbs and I'm up here sitting at six armor charge then I would still have that minute of 100 strength therefore my melee ability would come back as fast as it possibly can then let's say I go into the class ability or the class item and you look here and you've got time dilation your decaying armor charge so that thing where it says it takes 10 seconds has a longer duration if you do one it's 15 if it's two it's 18 and it's three, it's 20. Now it's like, adds five seconds, adds three seconds, adds two seconds. You got to figure out the benefit. But all of these mods combined, if I find three orbs of power on the ground, which is not the hardest thing in the world to come by, I will have six armor charges. I've got room to store all six. And each of those armor charges is going to last for 18 seconds. And for those 18 seconds, I'm going to have a total of 60 additional strength stats on my character. So for 
18 seconds times six, which is nearly two minutes, you're going to have, be at 100 strength. So for almost two minutes, and again, if I come in here just to round the numbers out, if I found three armor charges for two minutes, I would be running around with 100 strength. That's what that one does. But again, you got to find the point where diminishing returns make sense. How much am I really giving up if I do this? Not that much. So now I have the ability to pick up one orb, get two armor charges. If I find one more orb, I'm at four. Each one of those armor charges lasts for 15 seconds. So two orbs of power, I've got a minute of the benefit. And that benefit is going to be 30 to my stat. So at least I'm up in tier seven. So just with those mods done, and then I can now look into other stuff. I'm like, okay, gain class ability energy when you cause damage with your melee. Eh, I'm using my melee a lot. But what if I'm also using a melee and your powered melee final blows create orbs of power? Well, there's more orbs, so that's probably going to last a little longer now. Causing damage with a grenade reduces your melee cooldown. Every soft I will probably use my grenade. That's going to get me more melee energy. So I could do it that way. Now I will have some a little bit left over stats, so I could boost my stat up a little bit. Come up here to the helm. What else do we have? Gain bonus super energy on melee kills. Well, I'm picking up orbs and I'm getting super energy when I get those melee kills. Perfect. Uh, what else do I want to do? Uh, let's see. Make sure I got some heavy ammo. And then if I have anything left, we'll put it into that uh, strength mod. We'll come down here to the chest. Well, let's see. I don't want to mess with, um, you know, I am getting the benefit of every soft and I'm going to get the strength benefit. So maybe also I throw on a little bit of extra resilience, which will be 30 as I'm picking up all these mods, which are these orbs, which I'm getting all the time. So even though my resilience is not at 100, now it is anytime I have armor charge. And then finally we'll put on, uh, let's just do some sniper resist so I don't get picked off from far away. I've got a little bit of a mod stat there. Let's go into the legs. Well, what else is based on melee? Reduces melee cooldown each time I pick up an orb of power. Well, I'm going to be doing that all the time. So I'll get my melee back sooner. And let's see what else I can do here. Oh, well, here we go. Here's the benefit. Uh, I've got solar weapons equipped. That's how I'm starting my benefit. So your solar weapons have a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge. I'm running around with armor charge pretty much the entire time. So I'm covered there. And looks like I've got two for stats. So I could give myself, you know, a little bump to what's going to probably have the most benefit to me. I get up to 90. There you go. Get a little more grenade energy. Tier 9. Come down here to the class item. Well, what do we do here? Reduces melee cooldown when I use my class ability. Well, that's nice. And reduces all ability cooldowns when using your class ability near targets. Or maybe I reduce my grenade cooldown when I use my class ability as well. So I get both back. And my final armor mod slot. Since that's kind of where I'm stuck. Uh, let's see, I could put my grenade up to 100. That's everything. So that is the benefit of one of unlocking 10 out of 10 energy. So going for those ascendant shards from high difficulty activities. Uh, the benefit of artifice armor. So you get that free stat that you can get if you really want that. And again, I'm kind of wasting some of the stat here. So I could actually just like, uh, let's see. So what do I have room for? I have five. I have a lot of energy I could use. Um... Let's go for an additional three seconds on each charge. Like a little more benefit there. Let's go melee cooldown focus. And then I can still get my 10. So that way I'm using all of my energy charges. So I've got my stats for my discipline up to tier 10. So I'm getting my grenade every minute and 16 seconds. But I've also got the benefit of some of these other mods where if I do get any of this other stuff going along with melee, it's going to help. I've got sniper resistance. Now, if I go get an, a charge, let's see if I've actually got any enemies out here that I can shoot, I should get like three benefits on screen. Now, the problem is for a solar subclass, you're going to see a whole lot of other effects. So let me see if I can just take those off. I don't know if I can. Oh, I actually can. Okay. And you shouldn't see all the restoration and radiant and all those other things going on. But if I can just get two solar kills... Now you're going to see Solar Weapon Boost, Improved Ability Regeneration. That one's got times two on there. 
And now I'm up to four armor charges. Those are going to last for 18 seconds. So it's going to be a minute and 12 seconds that I have the benefits that I've got. And then every time I find an orb over the next minute and 12 seconds, I'm going to get to renew that benefit and start over. And I'm literally just going to run around with these benefits constantly. Damn near until I just like don't play for a little while. And this is just one of those things that you can... This is one of many ridiculously like... You know, probably not the most effective ideas, but this is what you can do. Find a play style that you enjoy. Titans, throwing a bonk hammer around, pretty, pretty nice. Because if I get melee kills, I'm building up my super. If I'm doing this, that, or the other thing. See, now I'm making orbs of power every time. So, like, as a titan, I'm just running around with orbs non-stop. And it seems ridiculous, but that's just like, that's the build. There's going to be so many things that you're going to have the possibility to do. And it's going to be kind of fun. And that's like, this is the best way I can show it to you is actually give you an example of something a bit ridiculous. But this is like just one of those ways you can set the whole system up. And the diminishing returns is probably where you want to pay attention to what's going to work, what's not going to work. But I will tell you that, you know... If you lean into certain things, oh no, I've lost one of my mods, but guess what? Now I can put on distribution. Use your class, um, reduces all ability cooldowns when you use my class ability near targets. Depending on like a hunter, if you dodge, that's pretty good. Maybe I want, maybe I do reduce my grenade cooldown and my class ability or my melee. So if I use this and I use this, well, I gotta actually throw it away. And then I use my class ability. I bump up both my grenade and my melee at the same time. And I'm also getting these things back sooner. So it's just kind of experimenting with your with your weapons. And then if you have a weapon that's doing like Demolitionist or whatever it may be. Oh, if I'm really into, I don't know, Adrenaline Junkie. Or maybe I'm into something that's got Swashbuckler. It's all about melees and I'm doing that damn near all the time. Well, my benefits are going to be pretty high. So that's where all of this stuff just is pretty crazy and a lot of fun. And I'm not even scratching the surface of all the different loadouts. You're going to see people making loadout videos constantly. And I will try and do that as well for all the classes over time as I find a build that I think works. But this is the kind of the best way I can show you the loadout system. And guess what? All my mods, since this one is saved with no mods, start from scratch and a clean slate. So honestly, if you have a set of armor you do like using, but you have like a clean slate, I would probably save a clean slate somewhere. Um, weapons probably aren't going to matter, but a clean slate somewhere. So if you want to start over, it's actually just quicker. But that's the mod system. You've got the yellow mods that are going to take a trigger to have some benefit from. You're also going to have the armor charge if you have a yellow mod that sits there until you use that trigger. The green mods are usually going to do something with your armor charge. So it's going to give you a benefit to getting an armor charge in some way. Or it's going to give you more armor charge, make the time decay last longer, give you more stacks... Um, get you another stack. All of those things are the green ones. And then the blue ones are going to be the ones that are related to armor charge and time decay. And that time decay is 10 seconds at default and you can increase it up. But that I know is kind of the best way I can show you the armor system in general and how the mods can work, how each of the mods have some functionality to them. And then from there, it's just going to be your experimentation. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. If you've got a build and a loadout system that like setup that works, you know, drop a few of the details in the comments. If you guys want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it is Ebontis over there. But here on YouTube, if you're enjoying my content and my videos, please hit that subscribe button as we're climbing to 100k. We are not that far away. And hit that alert bell. That'll help my videos in the future make it to you as well. Good luck out there. Have fun making some loadouts, and I will see you soon.